I think that Pine really deserves some credit. The first Pine64 device I had was a Pine book. I was in a Flixbooks, Flixbus going back from Flores to Genoa and I had just met a friend who gifted me that Pine book as a birthday gift and I remember that I was in this small Flixbus seat with this small Pine book computer and I opened it and my first thought was whoa that screen is really good it was a full HD LED display, which is, well, not that good if you compare it to my usual computer, but for a $99 device, this was the base model, that was really impressive. And then I started typing the password, of course. My friend put the password as a riddle, so I had to guess it. Uh, pretty fun, I gotta say. And the second third was, it's really good, the keyboard is really good. I kind of expected some, some plasticky, very small as it's 11 inches keyboard, but I could actually type pretty fast. Uh, I just tested it yesterday after one year of not using it, and I was able to have 91 words per minute right away. It's a very good keyboard for the price. And as you can see, the port selection is also pretty good for being, you know, 2020. So, of course, I decided to keep it and start using it as my main device dur during vacation. The second thing that surprised me while I was using it on the beach looking at the sea was that I was using it for quite a while and the battery was still 90%. And that's really good. My computer was much worse than that. So I started using it as a computer to bring around when I need a good screen, a good keyboard, and a good battery life, but not great performance. Although I gotta say, I wasn't disappointed by the chip either. It had two gigabytes of RAM, with which uh, many people criticized, but I actually think it was really good for the device, again. Plasma is quite lightweight and with 2 gigabytes of RAM you can do a lot. You can uh, do Python scripts as I used to with a decent editor like Kate, not Visual Studio because uh, it will eat up your 2 gigabytes in a second. You could also open quite some tabs of Firefox. I had no problem in navigating around the internet. Although, of course, playing videos, it was a bit slow, especially at high quality. The audio was a bit bad, that was the downside, and after using it I also realized that the touch pad was really bad. It kept on moving when I wasn't actually touching it. And another thing that puzzled me was that the meta key, for some reason, didn't actually open up kickoff, but the context menu, I tried to change it following the instructions, but it didn't work and that was weird. But if you don't consider those flows, and it's really easy to not consider them when you think that it's $99, it was really a good device that I kept bringing with me, until I didn't. Because after all, my main computer was just a bit um, heavier and of course much better, much more expensive. And then I started using the Pine phone. I got one delivered to me as a KDE developer. I also did a video on this channel when it arrived. And of course, that was going to be a much harder task, falling in love with the Pine phone as much as the Pine book, because the software wasn't quite there yet. Whereas the Pine book uh, benefited from all of the desktop experience that KDE has. On the phone side, the things were a bit, um, the things were a bit sketchier. However, you gotta consider just how impressive the fact that the Pine Phone exists is. Back when it was announced, not released but actually announced, even in the rumors like Pine64 said, we might do something like that. The only real al alternative were Android Phone with Linux and the Librem, which was announced years before and it kept being delayed 
and it was going to be super expensive. So it was really impressive that Pine64 managed to get a phone in such a short time frame. It really beat the Librem, I think, and it was really cheap. So I think that even though the software was a bit lacking, the hardware was really impressing to even exist in the first place. Now I got it back from the bookshelf and uh, of course it broke the software luckily so I have to reinstall everything but when I will do that I really I'm really looking forward to playing even more with it. So of, out of the two devices of Pine64 that I held I was really impressed like honestly impressed out of the box for the first one and by the second one after a week or two of using it. And that could be it, except it isn't because Pine64 just decided to release the Pine Note. Now of course they also release other stuff that I didn't mention like Pine Dio, the Pine Time, the Pine Book Pro, but those things interested me a bit less and I don't have them. The Pine Note is really impressive because it's for the first time a device that's competitive in price as well with the, with the other products and that's really unique in the Linux panorama. I really cannot think of another Linux e-ink e-reader and even if it will be very, very hard to create the right software for it and even if the software maybe won't be there day one, I think that's really impressive. I think that's really impressive. Um. Thank you, churches. Another thing that However, you got to consider just how great of a device Android phones with Linux. And that could be... So I think that even though the software lacked... If you know one, please tell me. <laughs> 